Hello, everyone. I am Roman Ball with Kalo Services, and today's video is about the basics of Service Checker. I've seen a lot of people on uh, Facebook um, as well as Messenger that have uh, reached out to me about creating some content around basic, basic Service Checker data, how to read it, uh, what it looks like, what are we even looking at, right? Um, there's a lot of great classes out there, SNT1, SNT2. Um, that allow you to dive into stuff like this and, and do a little more of a hands-on approach with Service Checker. But for those of you out there who don't have access to that class or time to take that class, uh, this will be a basic overview of everything that we're looking at in Service Checker itself. So uh, here on my screen, you can see that I have the uh, segment of data pulled up through, uh, this is Service Checker 4, that I have on my laptop right now. And as you can see on the right-hand side, I have all the data points uh, plotted out with names, you notice here I have a data item, data, last modified, and then full scale. Uh, data item is the name of the item that we're looking at. Uh, the data itself is telling me if it's off, on, or a specific value. Uh, last modified lets me know when the last time it actually updated on my service checker. And then full scale gives you an idea of what the range is. Um, so you'll notice here for target condensing pressure, right, the full top scale range of that is, is 500. Um, this just kind of gives you a perspective if you're not familiar with vrv or vrv systems um, you know you may not understand or know what your um, the bottom threshold is which is typically zero but more so you wouldn't know what your your top end threshold is right how how wide open is my valve right so it says it's 200 pulses is that wide open uh, we can know that by looking at our full scale here on the right hand side and see that okay this valve pulses at 3000 is 100 percent open Let's digress a little bit. So when we're looking at these things, right, these line items here and the data sets themselves, you'll notice also on the left-hand side, we have a graph. And what that graph allows us to do is it allows us to uh, plot specific points that we want to see over a specific period of time. So when we look at this graph on the left-hand side, you'll notice I added system horsepower and I also added system target uh, evaporating temperature. You can see as we roll through this and I click that they actually change numbers and they increase. Now, another important thing to know about the graph here on the left hand side is that at the very bottom is the timestamp window in which we're looking at. So on the far left hand side, this is 741 uh, a.m. And then on the right hand side, this is 751 a.m. And so we're looking at a 10 minute window. This was a 10 minute segment of changes that we've seen here. Below that, you're the F1, F2, F4, F5, F6. These are your actual navigational um, buttons for the graph itself to navigate it even more. So let's say I want to zoom out and see more of a timestamp. Let's say I want to see uh, a one hour window. So then I would click this F2 button, right? It looks like two lines pointing towards each other to zoom out. And there you go. Now I can see one hour. I can go even further out to a maximum of two hour window on service checker to see that data as it progresses over time. Why is that important? This allows me to look for something specific. Let's say that I'm looking for <clears throat> discharge superheat on a system, right? So I'm gonna get rid of all the plots that I don't need. And I'm gonna do, let's not even do target, let's scroll down here. I'm gonna do my condensing temp. And then I'm going to do my discharge pipe temp, right? So we know TC, discharge pipe temp minus TC is discharge superheat. So now I can see what my discharge superheat is for this particular outdoor unit over a two hour period. You can see as it ebbs and flows, as they fall apart. You'll notice here is probably the, the greatest distance between the two, possibly even here. I can click on that and I can say, okay, in this two hour window, Right here is my greatest discharge superheat. And then I would do the math and say, yeah, that's not that's not really good. Um, so then maybe I want to zoom in more on that, that section. I would then click the F1, right? I would go over to that timestamp uh, to see what that actually, why was it so far apart? What else was going on in that area? Um, how quickly did it change over time? Those are all the important things that we want to look at when we're talking about, um, you know, troubleshooting VRV systems, troubleshooting refrigeration systems in general. Um, it's never one set of data. It's always how does the system progress and perform over a set period of time? Does it get better? Does it get worse? Does it stay the same? 
Um, all of those things are important when we are talking about troubleshooting. So that's how you navigate the uh, graph on the left-hand side. You'll notice I can move in small increments of recording sections every 20 seconds here. Someone set this up to record every 20 seconds. It's not the data changed in those 20 seconds. Um, data updates every 60 seconds. So if you want to save yourself a bunch of extra clicks when you're looking at service checker data, just make sure you set that record up correctly. Um, and then from there, right, so I can navigate inside this window and graph using these uh, arrow buttons on the bottom left, right? That lets me go through the data points here and also scroll in a fine-tuned manner. But then also I can jump over to another section of data by clicking this right here, these buttons, these left and right arrows, the F3 and F4. This lets me go through the rest of the data that I'm looking at. And then obviously you have your close button in the bottom left. So let's go through the majority of our data set here. So you'll notice here the O, right? One, two, three, four, there, every line item is numbered in Service Checker from top to bottom. That is how this program is set up. Those numbers don't really mean anything. They just help you to point out, hey, if you go to line item 152, that's what I'm looking at in Service Checker uh, when you're troubleshooting or walking somebody else through it. Now, the O is for outdoor, right? System, this is meaning that this is actually your system's set points, right? These are the things that my system programming is looking at. It's not until we get down here to where it says O and then O1 in parentheses that this tells me that now I'm looking at my outdoor unit number one data points. These are all the points that are being pulled in to my unit uh, from my main control board that are plugged into my main control board. You'll notice that I have uh, my unit number, right? This is just your AirNet address set on your outdoor unit. Uh, is it an error? No, it is not, right? What are my revolutions of my first compressor? Does it have a second compressor? If it does, here is where the revolutions would live. Uh, expansion valve, upper heat exchanger, subcooling expansion valve, lower heat exchanger, subcooling injection. This tells me if it has a subcooling injection that it's most likely a VRVX system. Um, or it could be uh, an Aurora. Cooling refrigerant circuit, this is your loop across your inverter board. Uh, leak detection, we don't use this valve in our market, so you can ignore it. Receiver gas purge, that's on your accumulator. And we've got our uh, compressor, whether it's on or off, the control board system is telling us, yes, this compressor is on, inverter two is on, even though it may not be. Don't think that that's a programming error, that's just the way that they set up this uh, this system to read out data points. All right, so fan steps, you know, zero to 53. You'll notice at VRV3, um, we were actually in like a zero to eight step range. So it's a lot different. Just remember to always reference your service manual for the unit that you're actually working on. Uh, and it goes a little bit further than just to say how many steps the unit has. Um, the fan rotation amount for RPMs, first fan, second fan. So it's a dual fan chassis. Then your four-way valves, high-low pressure, upper heat exchanger, lower heat exchanger, right? These are all either off or on points, podcast bypass. These are all your solenoid valves in your outdoor unit. And we get down here to crankcase heaters. We have uh, drain pan heater energy cutoff. That's a new one. Um, so I wouldn't really worry too much about referencing that one right now. Mm -hmm. Course power, we use that to measure, you know, how the system's performing in other markets. Then we get into your safeties, high pressure retry, low pressure retry, discharge pipe retry. These are all of your safeties that may energize if the system hits uh, the necessary window or uh, time frame where something like this would apply. And so I can plot this on my graph here on the left hand side and say, OK, it went into high pressure retry three times before it threw a high pressure error code. Um, that's something that I can actually see through service check. These are basically safety controls saying, hey, there's an issue. I'm going to step down and try again. And if there's an issue again three times in a row, I'm going to generate an error code. You can watch that unfold through these little um, on off safeties that you see here. I inverter standby once, standby two, high pressure step down. All of these things are referenced in the service manual as to what their in and out conditions are. And so when I say in conditions, that means that whatever has to happen within the system, you know, data point for time, you know, high temperature, low temperature, low pressure, high pressure. Uh, it will describe to you what has to happen for this to turn on, which is the in condition. And then it'll also tell you what has to happen for it to turn off and let the system go back to normal control. 
If you ever see any one of these on from high pressure retry number 51 all the way down to number 69, there is an issue with your system or the system thinks there's an issue with your system. And if any one of these are on, you should be referencing your service manual to find out what has to happen for this to turn on. And then you go to your system and you start troubleshooting. These are dead giveaways as to an issue within the system. At any point in your data set, these get turned on. I would investigate. Doesn't mean that there's an issue. It just means that you should investigate further to find out if there is an issue. But it's designed to help you push you in the right direction as well as also protect the outdoor unit. Then you'll notice here, right, OU1, now we're getting into the sensors. Um, we got outside air temp, discharge pipe temp, right? Discharge pipe temp two, compressor two. I know that's 32 degrees, which is a null value, which means that this sensor is not being used in this module, which means that it's a single compressor module. Receiver inlet tip. Here's all your uh, upper and lower heat exchangers, your liquids and your gas temps, subcoolant valve temps. These are all of your thermistors. They get banked in one section inside the actual service checker. Leak detection temp not being used, negative 52.6. It's not something that you should worry about. Subcooling injection temp, right? Then we get into our pressures, condensing pressure, evaporator pressure, condensing temperature. So we take this, this program itself takes this pressure and converts it to the saturation temperature for 410A, which for this, 406.2 PSI is a condensing temp of 118.4. Same thing with the evaporator temp on the suction pressure. Compressor current, inverter fin temp, Right, we're going down and down and down. And then you'll notice, okay, wait, now I went from OU1 to OU2, O2. That means that this has two modules tied together. Now I'm looking at the same exact data, but for the module next to the master, this is the sub module. So now everything that we just covered is on repeat, but for that specific module. So don't assume that just because you have the repeat of data that they are exactly the same because they will modulate differently. They will do things differently. You might find that one unit is in a low pressure step down while the other one is not. All of this information is here for you to reference. Once you get past that, right, if it's only one module, you only have the O1, um, you get to the indoor units, I-1. You'll notice that we've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12 lines of data for each indoor unit on a VRV system. Operation on off, right? Whether the thermostat is turned on or off, thermostat on means is it calling for cooling? Is there a demand for heating? Is there a demand for cooling? Yes, it's on. Okay. Capacity increase, no. You don't have to worry about that one on a deep dive for right now. We're just covering the basics error code, error subcode. Remote preset temp, suction temp, this is your return air thermistor, right? The air being sucked into the back of the unit, your indoor liquid pipe temp, your indoor gas pipe temp, and then your indoor expansion valve opening pulses. And then you'll notice if it had a BRC attached to it, that it would give me a BRC temperature here. Operation mode, we are in cooling. Operation mode, stop, and now we're in IDU number two. So you'll see that that repeats all the way down and so on this system i can tell you confidently that i have 32 indoor units on this system right i32 tells me i have 32 indoor units all right that is in a very brief quick manner doesn't feel quick description of what we're looking at in service checker and what all of these data points mean now remember that most everything that is in here is referenceable in the service manual itself uh, but these are all of the data points that you need to know. Now, the last one, which I didn't cover because I wanted to cover it last, is your system parameters. So at the very top here where it says system, this is going to tell me if it's fan off uh, or fan only, right? If it's starting up on the outdoor unit and only the fans are running, if it's in heating mode, if it's in cooling mode, if it's cooling, heating parallel, which as you can see, it is. Thermostat on means there's a thermal demand inside on one of the indoor units and the system is trying to start or is starting. Restart standby means that it probably hit a condition in which um, the retry was activated 
and there was an issue with the system starting, either the compressor overamped or it, it hit a critical error, and it wants to go ahead and try restarting the system to see if it can resolve itself. It'll do this three times and then trip out. That is also something you can track on here. Error code if there is one, sub error code if there is one. Don't always reference the error codes that are in Service Checker. Always go to the outdoor unit and verify on the actual board itself. Backup control, target condensing pressure, right? Then we've got MPA, uh, you know, for those of you who enjoy MPA. Target condensing temp. So it gives you the pressure for the target condensing pressure and the target condensing temp. I like to usually just go off the target condensing temp. But remember, these these are this is what the system is driving to. So when we're talking about looking at service checker data at 118.4, this system is trying to hit 118.4. Um, you know, target condensing temp, if it was in a heating mode, if it was in a cooling mode, then it's looking for a target evaporating temp of 23.2. Now, and that's important because this is what the system is trying to ramp that compressor up and down to. So if you have an erratic compressor that's going up and down, up and down, you can verify, is my system randomly changing my target condensing temp? Probably not. Yes, you can see here in a, in a two hour window that it changes, uh, but it's not drastic, nor does it happen uh, in a fast manner. Defrost, oil return, startup control, outdoor unit current, horsepower, demand input, operation control mode, um, indoor unit capacity, right? These are all the things <clears throat> that you're going to reference at the top of your service checker. And it's always at the top. It should always be at the top. If it doesn't populate at the top, exit out, restart it, and start it again. But this should be at the top. This is the driving force behind the system in general. Is it on? Is it running? Right. And then there you go. That's that's the general uh, explanation of it. And then last but not least, I made a video about this one. Um, operation control mode. Operation control mode just essentially tells you what the system is doing at any given time uh, so that you know where you should be and what looks like normal data. So this tells me as it goes through these control modes, OK, why is it pumping itself down? Well, OK, in this mode here, it's in residual pump down. Right. These are things we can track now by going through the operation control modes when we're looking at service checker. But like I said, check out my other video on that, um, and it should be extremely helpful. So, all right, hopefully this uh, basics on service checker wasn't extremely overwhelming. Um, but uh, yeah, happy hunting and uh, go out there and have some fun looking at service checker data.